All right, let's take a look at some of the dailies here this morning. We'll start with New Telegraph today. Okwama soldiers invaded my country home, father's compound, described to Clark. Says troops claim they were looking for soldiers' killers. Six judicial inquiry into Okwama tragedy. Residents flee Kiagbodo following invasion. Army buries 17 slain officers, soldiers today. So that much you also did here uh, moments ago here on the program. And so at the bottom strip, Governor Lawal tells Tinubu, deal with Zamfara bandits, raid north of insecurity. That also highlights here on the front page of New Telegraph. Vanguard newspapers also focusing on the Okwama killings and um, look at this. Okwama, how government security bodies failed to rein in militant leader. That's an investigation they have carried out. So the Vanguard investigation is how it's titled. I petition presidency, state government, security bodies to no avail. That's according to His Royal Highness Ofongo. Troops knew where the killer was and went there. Monarch forced to take oath of allegiance to militant leader Diri Silva in verbal war. Militant leader dismisses JTF's allegation of his involvement in bunkering. Delta community cries out as soldier comes home's shrine for stolen weapons. Troops seize 12 local vigilante guns and it's able to attend today's burial of slain 17 soldiers. You also see that story. Soldiers invaded my country home at Kiagodo. That's according to uh, Chief Edwin Clark. That story is also there. But he says he's forgiven the Nigerian army um, after he was apologized to. So page five is where you find details. Uh, let's leave you there for Vanguard newspapers. Well, this Nigeria has a similar story right under its nameplate this morning. But the, its lead story is also about the same issue of insecurity. We're not done talking about Okwama, but guess what? The governor uh, of uh, the governor is crying out there, banditry, Zamfara under siege. Governor Lawal cries out. The details of that you'll find on the inside pages. Rushes to presidential villa, tells Tinubu, Northern Nigeria heading for crisis. If nothing is done, right next to that rider, we've curbed kidnap of students in Borno, as ascribed to Governor Zulum. Details of that you'll find on page four of the, this Nigerian newspaper today. Well, The Guardian, a CBN sees growth for foreign capital inflow as Naira nears $1,300 to the dollar. That's a big lead right there this morning. And uh, uh, NLC warns as new minimum wage committee meets. That you also find as The Guardian at the moment. Well, take a look at Daily Trust, and uh, they have the 60 hours after Kuriga students yet to reunite with families. That story is right there on the front page. We're eager to have them back home. I mean, that's only expected according to the parents. That's from the parents. They are undergoing psychotherapy. That, that's a response from the government. Submission of two lists responsible for 287 figure. That is according to a resident. I almost read president. <laughs> but no, that's according to a resident who is saying that he had two lists. That's perhaps why they, um, the figure of 287 was flying about. But we'll see. Bandits, kingpin, yellow jambros behind abduction. Find out who's speaking on page four of the paper. Of course, they also still have that CBN story for you. Amid soaring inflation. CBN raises benchmark lending rate to 24.7%. And we will be, you know, going through that for you much later in the program. So stay with us. Uncovers $2.4 billion forex scam. Decision putting pressure on banks, as according to experts. And BDC rate appreciates to 1,304 to the US dollar. We'll leave it there for Daily Trust. The leadership newspaper is calling attention to some implications of that CBN position, according to uh, some other understanding. As attacks on farmers escalate, 18.6 million Nigerians face acute hunger. That story is on page four. What needs to be done needs to be done as quickly as possible. 
and you find uh, the infographics there talking about food import and agri exports between 2018 and 2022. 100 million food insecure Nigerians rise. Food insecure Nigerians rise to 100 million from 66.2 in 2023, and on and on. Uh, you'll find all of that right there. That's the lead story of the leadership newspaper this morning. Okay, let's have a look at, uh, do we have the <coughs> business day up next? Let's take a look at that if we do. Okay, so there you go. CBN hikes rate again in push to tame inflation. Raises merchant banks CRR to 14%. That's a lead one they find right there. So that's business day. Our blueprint has this. Save Zamfara from terrorism to protect the North. Lawal begs Tinubu. That story is right there on the front page of blueprint newspapers. The Daily Independent newspaper um will give the investors in the airline business some concern why nigerian airlines can't be part of global alliances all of that what does it mean details on the front page continues on page 29 of uh, the daily independent newspaper this morning Nigerian news direct economy policy overhaul Again, CBN hikes NPR by 200 basis points to 24.75% amid inflationary pressures. So that's the lead story here today, which is part of what we'll also focus on in just a moment. That's News Direct today. Well, quite a number of stories stick out. I'm looking at uh, Vanga newspapers now, and this other story that is there, yes, they've done a, a special investigation into the Okwama uh, situation and what has transpired there. That story is on the front page of Vanguard. But what is catching my attention right now is this story at the bottom. Kuka to federal government interrogate persons with ties to bandits. Uh, that story is also right there. No cause for alarm, says Gumi, after questioning by security men. Two days ago, the federal government did inform us that uh, uh, Sheikh Gumi had been invited for questioning over some of his comments that he had made earlier. Um, and I think that quite a number of people are concerned about the, you know, will I say, an attempt to reframe the conversation around what is happening with insecurity in the North. Uh, yes, indeed, you know, quite a number of people have suffered, have suffered deprivation. But certainly, the way and manner um, that, you know, bandits, and some people say the word to use for them, is no longer bandits, that these are terrorists. When people go about, get little children from schools, kidnap them, hold them for days in the hope that they'll get ransom from government. What, it, what they're doing is terrorizing communities and terrorizing the country. And as such, those people can no longer be categorized as bandits, the appropriate word. And maybe we're also seeing that, um, you know, right here on the front page of Daily Trust newspapers with the president saying we must treat kidnappers as terrorists. So those two stories are very linked. Does it now spell what government intends to do? Uh, is it, you know, coming up with a change of um, policy towards how this menace is now being looked at um, and all of this talk? Because don't forget that before now, uh, Chamberlain, we had heard that ransom had been paid in some instances. We've since heard government say very clearly that no longer, you know, will they be paying any ransom. Now, if that, ha if that has now been maintained in the case of the return of the children, mm -hmm. um, you know, government has come out to say it didn't happen. Can we take their word for it is another question. But we sincerely hope that whatever it is they say with regards to you know, what is happening in the North, yeah. that they will put their money where their mouth is because people are beginning to say, look, we need to begin to interrogate persons with links and also do not be shy to publish publish the list of terrorism financiers if the uh, if dubai could you know help us out by pointing out and sending us that list why is it so difficult for the nigerian government to publish why is it so difficult for the nfiu to claim a list that was said to have emanated from within it why is it so difficult you know 
speaking of which, look at the front page of this Nigeria, and that highlights a lot. There it tells you Zamfara, according to the governor there, he says Zamfara is under siege. And that's why he rushed to the president to tell him. And I know we've had lawmakers from Zamfara State here on the program saying when they raise this kind of matters, they accuse them of politicizing the entire thing. Now the governor himself has gone to the president. Not that he's saying anything new, but just this latest act now of him going to the president. <clears throat> so the thing is this, look, what more can anyone say? But well, bottom line is, as we make our bed, so we will lie on it. Indeed. That's so true. Well, but um, the thing is, the people are not the ones making it. Well, the, the policymakers are the ones making it. Is it fair that the kind of bed that policymakers make for them or government officials make for them that's is why, what they should lie on? That's why it can both be considered as a proverb, an idiom, whichever way mm -hmm. you like to look at it. But the word is out there. The word is enough for the wise. Are you? Thank you, uh, Chamberlain, and I don't know if we can put it any better than we already did. You know, the, the, what, what catches my own attention this morning is on the front page of the leadership newspaper, and I think one way or the other, all of these issues network. The front page of the leadership newspaper this morning, for instance, has a, si a story right by the side of the major um, headline, public sector most affected by corruption. That's according to a survey. Which survey you may want to check? Well. It's the Nigeria Corruption Perception Data. Again, perception. Mark, with that book you often quote, that's uh, authored by Mr. Babatunde Fashola, you know, talks about the fact that we pay a lot more attention to the Corruption Act than we pay to the Corruption Perception. And so in this case of the public sector, number one, is it a perception or is it something that actually does happen? It also leads me to that question, that age-long question, of the Oronsaye report, which we're already talking about. How far so far? We know that the president gave six weeks. How many weeks gone? How many weeks more to come? And when is that report going to be out? When is the white paper of it going to be out? For the report going to be out? And then when is the implementation going to take off? Those concerns that are already in public domain, how are they going to deal with the issue of corruption? and then corruption perception in the public sector, be it federal or state, even local, I guess time will tell. That's it, uh, Chamberlain. Yeah, so there you go. That does it for a look at some of the dailies here today. But you know that briefing that the CBN had yesterday, we'll attempt to just break it down. What does it mean for you and I, regular people on the streets? Yes, I can say that. So give us a moment. We'll talk about that when we return. Stay on with us.